so here we look into the typical zonation of organisms that is the assemblage of organisms in the rocky intertidal zone so if you look at the low tide part right so mostly submerged with the organisms so these are nothing but the soft shelled organisms because it don't want to expose much in the sunlight and it don't it don't have the capacity to withstand the longer duration as i said one low tide to high tide will take 6 hours and 25 minutes right so it has to which it cannot withstand nearly 3 3 to 6 hours of the duration since these plants brittle stars sea urchins sea anemones and other um, animals are mostly accumulated or accumulated in the low tidal model and if you slightly move on to the mid tidal region and the high tidal region they will be mostly dominated with the shelled organisms so whenever the water recedes back into the low tidal these areas are highly exposed to the sunlight or the atmosphere right so in order to protect from the scorching sun these organisms are these organisms enclose the shell and then stay inside the shell so that's why these uh, high and the mid tidal regions are mostly with the shelled organisms and if you move on to the rocky shores most public public recreational beaches are usually sandy shores and these shores are usually exposed and then which are poor in nutrients and therefore the organisms and these sandy shores are always slopy you might have observed in the beaches and then there will be always a shift of sands and then rapidly changing condition which makes the organisms difficult to thrive in these areas so on the right you have a typical mole crab which usually burrows in the sandy beaches so these uh, mole crabs are uh, abundant in the east coast especially in the chennai waters if you look at the environmental characters there is always a two types of beaches one is the coarse beach and then a fine sand beach the first image shows these coarse beaches are have a steep profile and there is a interstitial spaces large interstitial spaces between the coarse so that the water cannot stay in for a long time and then the organisms may not survive here for a long duration if you look at the fine sand beach and the interstitial interstitial spaces between the sand particles are very low so that there will be a small retention of water right inside the sediments but few organisms may also present and then rely on these uh, water for oxygen as well as suspended particles for food so if you look at the typical zonation in the sandy shore so this could be the fine uh, beaches right so there will be a sand dollars at the low tidal area which is mostly submerged with water and then if you move towards the mid tide and the high tidal region you have a ghost crab right, which can move fast and burrow easily inside the sand and then they will be dominated with the clams as well as worms so this can easily burrow inside the sand so if you look in, into the biodiversity of the sandy beach we can't find any macroscopic plants on the open sand beach because we don't have a hold fast to stay and then but rarely you can see some alga species or entomorpha right these are the green seaweeds which can be abundant in the sand flats so this could be mainly a fine sand but not the coarse sand beaches and we can't find any sessile organisms such as um mussels and barnacles and there will be small the benthic diatoms could be present in the sand grains as i said in the fine beaches there will be interstitial spaces which can hold the water so in those areas we can see some benthic diatoms and as i said it's are mostly dominated by the worms and then crustaceans and bivalves so if you look at the adaptations i said the, the organisms whether it could be a worm or a clam or uh, crabs it has to burrow deeply so it has to burrow deeply in the passing waves so once the wave pass and then it has to burrow deeply and then safeguard themselves in order to protect themselves from the predators and another uh, mechanism is it can burrow quickly so whenever the waves are passing so it can easily burrow deep or it can burrow quickly in order to away from the next wave um the examples are analyzed worms and clams
and then if you move on to the madhishor these are mostly dominated and then uh, dominated uh, areas of estuaries salt marshes bays lagoons and harbors so mostly protected from the open ocean wave action so here the wave action it will be two less right and then the bed or the topography is very flat and then more stable than the sandy shores so near sources of fine sediments so organisms can bury similar to the sandy shore in the muddy shore also the organisms bury themselves and then survive so if you look at the adaptations it's similar to sandy shores but certain organisms will form a permanent tubes right most of the suspended particles from the sand are taken inside and then it will utilize in the food and then it will wait for the next tide to turn in to bring the food into the burrows so the physical adaptation in these anaerobic conditions where the shrimps and crabs have hemoglobin with, with which has high affinity towards the oxygen and then other animals use glycogen stores whenever it went into the burrows for survival so if you look at the food sources in these areas it's mainly a phytoplankton or the benthic algae and most of them are rely on the detritus and then the bacteria which are the decomposers if you look at the feeding strategies there are deposit feeders and there are suspension feeders and then the tetras feeders you will look this into the example the first is the suspension feeding here you have a clamp which has the which has two valves like kind of a siphon right one is to intake the water and then when the water gets in and all the suspended particles will be trapped inside by the gills and then the remaining uh, pure water or the remaining water or the waste will be expelled out of the sediment if you look at the deposit feeders one type is the amphipod which is a symbiotic with the seaweeds which mainly feeds on the detritus that are brought in to the shore by the waves and tides the another type of deposit feeding is by lugworm which takes the sand or the water along with the water and all the particles will be trapped inside the body and then the remaining sand particles are be expelled out right and then the last one is a carnivorous feeding which is where the starfish mainly feeds on the shelled organisms like barnacles oysters and mussels their survival and this image is uh, the classical example of the rocky intertidal it's not only rocky but also a mixing of a sand boulders intertidal from the intertidal zone of the agati island lakshadweep